Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about being an engineer versus being a mechanic uh, and five things that you need to know. So we're just going to kind of work through, you know, the education experience behind it, the actual job experience. I have personally been an engineer for two years. Uh, Charles is a technician at a Volkswagen dealership. Yep. And so we're going to talk about our experiences, uh, how to get where we are, things like that, uh, and whether or not we recommend, you know, these individual yeah. fields and what advantages and disadvantages there sure. are. So the first question we'll get into is the educational requirement. So what is the educational requirement for a technician uh, to work at a dealership? I think it really depends a lot on what you already know going in. You know, one of the good things really about being a mechanic is you can learn more as you go than you would ever in uh, like a classroom type environment. Sure. I did go to tech school and it was great for me because I didn't know a ton going in. Um, so it sort of built the foundation to, to build on for the rest of my career. Uh, it was a one year tech program. I learned a lot about the way systems interacted with each other a lot more than I would have just kind of being thrown into the environment and, okay. and trying or to Or just kind of doing cars. it on your own. Or doing it on my own. You know, uh, you really learn as you're trying to fix things. And especially in that classroom environment where you don't have to have whatever you're trying to fix actually works. So yeah. you, you're in an environment where you can make mistakes and nobody's going to, hopefully anyway, lose <laughs> their life because you didn't put a wheel on, right? Mm -hmm. But or, what about, I, I mean, to me, an engineering type education is so, probably yeah, I a mean, lot more advanced. To get into like a, an entry level engineering position, typically you're just going to have a bachelor's of science in whatever said engineering field is. So for me, uh, I got a four year degree in mechanical engineering. Uh, and then from there, you know, you can get internships along the way. And then with that four year engineering degree, uh, I hopped into an entry level engineering position with a forklift company. Um, and I think that's pretty usual. It's starting to become more common for people to have master's degrees going in, which adds a year or two, depending on the program, but typically a four year degree to jump into it. Um, so as far as, you've kind of already jumped into it, but the education experience itself, uh, what are the things that you're learning in the classroom portion for that one year of tech school that you went to? Yeah, I did touch on it a, a little bit. And again, it's, it's sort of the theory behind a lot of things um, and the evolution of a lot of things was really cool. You know, starting with carburetors, throttle body injection to single cylinder fuel injection, direct injection, you know, you, you learn the basics and where things got started okay. and then how the technologies evolved in things, you know, all the things, all the systems of the car, engine with fuel delivery, engine management, brakes, ABS systems, traction control, you know, even tires have come so right, far yeah. in technology so much from, change. from yep. 45, you know, 50 years ago to, to what we have today. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the engineering thing is, it seems <laughs> to me, it's just you do a bunch of math. It, and, that, and that is, <laughs> so going into it, I didn't think, like I thought, oh, I'm going to go be a mechanical engineer and I'll learn how cars work. And it's like, no, you don't learn that at all. The educational experience itself uh, is more so theory behind everything. So I like to think of uh, civil engineering as like, anything structural, anything that does not move that is man-made, uh, I would classify as civil engineering. And then what I classify kind of as mechanical engineering is anything that moves that is man-made uh, typically will have a mechanical engineer in some fashion behind it. So it's, it's like the engineering of movement um, and anything that moves. And so with that, you're just studying the math of behind how all of this works. So the physics of it, um, you know, down to the level of what stress can uh, a column hold or what tensile strength can uh, this piece of metal hold. And so you get into these very obscure math yeah. problems that you don't necessarily apply to life. Um, and, and so coming out of it, I didn't think, wow, like I can design a car. Like I thought, wow, like I can solve some challenging math problems. <laughs> but it's cool because you have an application, I think, for that math problem. And right. It sort of gives you this relationship with the thing yeah, that you're working with. I think the struggle with, with my educational program that I went to was that there wasn't much applied until senior year. And then senior year, they say, hey, this company is sponsoring a project. You design this thing for them. And you're like, oh, I've never like used a tool before. Like, And then you kind of just jump into yeah. it and you learn like all the hands-on side of things mm -hmm. while applying the math into it. I think that a good program would have that start much earlier yeah. on um, and you kind of always have an application for what you're learning rather than learn a ton of math and then in the end be like, you can now build things, right? And it's like, eh, not <laughs> Design not this thing that has to save people's yeah. lives. You know, the, the automotive education end is sort of the opposite where you're given all these scenarios and they really do a good job of building your confidence to be able to 
diagnose <laughs> things because that's the thing you really learn is diagnosis. I mean, eventually you'll be able to figure out how to you know take parts off and put parts right. on, but it's the diagnosis part that uh, people really need to learn and understand. So you have this all these tests that you know how to do, all this equipment you know how to use, and then your first day in the dealership, someone hands you a job, and you're like, I, I don't know what, to, I, I yeah. don't know, where's the instructions on how to do this? Yeah, um, and so that's, you bring up a great point, kind of getting into the job. Uh, before we get into the job, point number three, we'll get into starting salary or starting pay. Uh, so at a dealership level, what is kind of what someone could expect if they were an entry technician at a dealership for pay? This is, of course, going to vary yeah. across the board. Yeah. Um, you know, we tend to start our Service Express guys, which is oil change, tire rotation, really light work, in the $10 to $13 okay. range. And the cool thing about that is that it's just you come in and we teach you how to do it. Technicians that have some experience, we usually bump them up you know, a couple bucks more depending on their experience. And then I would say once you've achieved a certain level of experience, three years or so, then it's not uncommon, I think, to hit in the, the $20 okay. per hour. Now that's $20 flat rate per hour. So that's okay. not just straight a $20 an hour salary. Right. You know, it you depends on the work your, that you accomplish. Exactly. You affect your, your okay. overall pay quite a bit. Uh, so for where I went, um, it was fairly common to just kind of go with like industry standard. And so if you look up, you know, you can just like literally Google average mechanical starting salary uh, for mechanical engineering. Um, and when I started, that was about 60 grand uh, was like average starting salary for a mechanical engineer. And that's probably gone up a little bit um, in the past few years. And then if you have a master's degree on top of that, typically it's going to be about a five to $10,000 pay bump on top of it and you know you of course miss out a year of work uh, but then you start in at a higher rate right. or two years of work if you know depending on the master's program so starting salary for mechanical engineers uh, exceptionally good yeah. probably one of the biggest perks of the job um, because there's a lot of stress related to it uh, but we will move on to the job requirements and kind of the the what you actually do uh, at yeah. the job. So the job requirements from stepping your foot in the door on your first day is actually one of the negatives for being a technician or a mechanic, you know, whatever you prefer, because as you see this toolbox behind us here, you basically need a box full of tools yes. before you can roll in the door. And I think my You're first- equivalent of the college tuition. <laughs> exactly, my first year of buying tools, you know, I had some tools going in, I spent well over $5,000 and yeah. just the bare essentials that I need. And you know, the good thing about it is for a while, it starts to dwindle down, but then as you get to be a higher level technician, that starts to ramp back and up. You get specialty uh, tools again. You know, then you start having to buy the very expensive, you know, use a couple of times a year type tools. So uh, I would say the tools are probably the thing that most people really don't consider uh, that you really do have to spend a crap yeah. ton of money. Yep. Uh, just to sort of come in the building. See, in the and, and like say. the crappy thing, I mean, it's not crappy, it's nice, but like from the engineering side, it's like, hey, we need this tool, and you write a note, and you give it to your boss, yeah. and they sign it. And so they all you need to come tool. into work in the morning is a pen, yeah. and preferably yeah. to be clothed, depending yeah. on where but, you work, So I getting into kind of the job requirements, um, from when I first started uh, working at this forklift company, I was an applications engineer, and it was kind of much more so marketing uh, based because they wanted me to kind of use my passion for teaching to teach our dealers. Uh, but I also worked on one of my first projects was design a cooling system for this electric truck, this electric forklift. And so I was on this team, uh, and I got to work with two other people on the team, and I was in charge of the cooling system. Uh, so that was one of the projects. And going into it, like, one of the things I think that you should know about engineering is you'll kind of just get thrown into it, uh, much like you did. Is, you just get thrown into it, and it's just kind of like, do yeah, it. And yeah. you're like... You'll learn along the way. <laughs> I don't know how to design a cooling system. And <laughs> I know way learn. more now yeah. about cooling systems, but that was my first task. And so you reach out for help, and you do your research, and you figure it out, and it gets done eventually. Um, and then very quickly, you become an expert. And so this was another thing that I found interesting about the engineering world is... Once you do something one time, like I designed a cooling system for this truck with the help of two other people, uh, it was like, oh, Jason's an expert on radiators. <laughs> and it was like, it was like, no, no, I did that once. Uh, and, and I liked it, but I don't necessarily want to be a radiator guy for the rest yeah. of my life. And that can easily happen in the engineering world, whereas if you work on one project and you do a nice job with it, uh, you may pigeonhole yourself into that 
But you can also, if you're good, you know, show, hey, this is what I've done, and step up very quickly and move uh, within the company very quickly. So within a year and a half, I'd switch positions to a test engineer job, um, and that's probably like the coolest engineering position, in my opinion, where it combines what you do uh, and what a typical engineer does who's just sitting on a computer designing stuff, mm -hmm. where we actually built a forklift from the ground up. So just me and one technician worked alongside, and in six months, uh, we started with metal plates, and after six months, uh, we had a moving, working forklift, nice. and then I quit my job. Uh, <laughs> but I did get to drive it right before we quit, but that was really cool because right. I got the hands-on part. Uh, I got to just order my tools. Uh, and Must be nice. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> I didn't keep them, though. I mean, there, well, there's that. that. that so it would be nice to have the, them in my garage now room. that I quit. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there, there's definitely some perks to it. Um, so advantages and disadvantages, you would say, to being a technician. You know, you sort of touched on one. One of the advantages of having to have all those tools coming in is you have all those tools going out. Yep. And uh, it, it's great to be able to understand that, you know, if, if you need to leave a job for whatever reason, you just lock your toolbox yeah. and you can roll it you know, wherever you need to. Also, good technicians are always in demand. Good technicians a lot of times can write their own paychecks. Good technicians also tend to build their own customer base. So that customer base generally comes along with them wherever they go, especially if it's a local yeah, place. You that know, makes sense. Dealer A to dealer B across town, you're going to bring a lot of those customers with you. And, and it's cool. It's cool to have customers that you've worked on, you know, five of their cars, right. and now they're 16 year olds getting a car and you're helping them pick a car. Yeah, that's very <laughs> cool. Um, some of the disadvantages. This is a really hard job. It's a lot harder of a job than people really give it credit for. You know, the idea is that the high school dropout becomes a mechanic, and that may have been true. I find it personally incredibly challenging. Ago. Every time I went into the shop, like I was a test engineer, and I'd be put into these situations like, hey, something's not working. And it's like, pfft. Like, I'm an engineer. I know how to fix it. <laughs> get, get Brian, my technician, over here because I have no idea yeah. what's going on. It's incredibly difficult. Yeah, it, it, it's it incredibly really difficult. You know, it's, it's physically difficult. Yes, um, that's it's another mentally part of it. difficult. The pay structure could be a lot better. So the, the pay definitely stresses, uh, stresses you out. So it's kind of difficult in all of the forms where a job can yeah. be difficult. But, you know, it, it's either for you or it's not for you. Yeah. So I would say from the engineering side, a lot of those disadvantages become advantages and some of the advantages become disadvantages. Uh, I mean, like starting out like physically, being an engineer is pretty simple. You're probably going to sit in a cube, which is probably a disadvantage, yeah. but you know, your, your physique uh, may dwindle. I think but you, you did pretty great with your physique. I, I escaped, <laughs> yeah. Um, but so that's one thing is physically, like you're not going to hurt yourself uh, very rarely. Um, also, the pay is exceptional, especially starting out. I mean, yeah. what you can start out with a four-year degree on is, is pretty insane, um, especially in the United States, just how well engineers are paid. So that's, that's a pretty cool benefit. Um, and also, the projects you get to work on. It, it is really cool to work on a project and then, you know, two years later, see what you built you know, like driving along and you can be like, I designed that. And like, we all work together. Like, sure, it's a team effort, but you can, you can have some value in saying like, oh, I was on that project uh, and it makes you feel pretty awesome once it's done. I'd say the disadvantages are you get thrown into situations much like uh, you're saying where you just have no clue what you're doing. And so when I was designing this cooling system, like I was totally clueless and it stressed me out for an extremely long amount of time. And eventually you get it done and you build a cooling system and the truck's running, it's at a customer site and it hasn't overheated. So I'm like pumped about that, uh, but very stressful. Uh, the hours can be crazy. Um, that's kind of a thing that, especially in the engineering world, seems to be acceptable that it's, you know, if you work 50 hours a week, like that's not crazy. If you work 60 hours a week, that's not unheard of. And it's like, that's a lot. Um, and, and I was kind of upfront from the beginning and said, you know what, I'm working 40 hours. Um, and so from that perspective, 40 hours a week, it's not physically demanding and you have tons of free time and plenty of money to do whatever you want to do. So it is really cool from that perspective. Uh, disadvantages would be stress, uh, time that goes into it. Um, and, and I think one of the things that people also don't think about is you know, you may say like, oh, I want to design an engine. And it sounds really cool to say I want to design an engine. 
but when you've spent three years working on the exact same engine, like it's not as thrilling yeah. on year three <laughs> uh, as it is on the first yeah. month. You're like, oh, like this is really cool. I get to make an engine, and it's like, man, there's a lot of work. So what I like about what I do currently is that I'm evaluating what other awesome engineers have done, and it's kind of crappy for me to do that. I feel like you know these guys put so much time and effort into yeah. this, and I'm supposed to critique it. Like, eh, it's it's awesome. What they did is awesome. Yep. Uh, they have their own, you know, restraints that is, as far as what holds them back in, in making it awesome or not. Cost usually being yeah. a driving factor. Yeah. And there's, I mean, there's definitely other pros and cons. You know, everybody's situation is is different. And some people hate being a technician because, you know, for whatever reason, but it pays the bills. Right. Some people probably yep. hate being an engineer, exactly. but it pays really well. So you sort of deal with it. Yep. And, uh, you know... And I think another thing to bring up just for fun of a disadvantage of being an engineer is that engineers... Uh, in general, like you're just taught to just think efficiently, like you should just do efficient things. And I like that line of thought, like it's logical, just do efficiency. Uh, but not every customer cares about efficiency. So Mr. Marketing comes in and he <laughs> says, hey, Jason, it's great that you want to build this engine that gets 45 miles per gallon, but nobody cares about 45 miles per gallon. Gas is $2 a gallon in the U.S., no one cares. And you're like, but but this is really awesome. Like all this technology I put into it. And they're like, nope, nobody cares. Make it 20 miles per gallon and make the thing way cheaper. And so you're, you're dictated by what the customer wants, not but what you want to make. And so, mm -hmm. you know, people will say, oh, this car's lame. It's like, mm, you guys are the ones buying it. Like you guys are the reason it's lame. <laughs> yeah. If everyone bought Epic cars, there would only be Epic cars. But then would they be lame is the question. They probably would be because... What I define as epic differs very greatly from Absolutely. what you define as epic. And Absolutely. that's what's kind of cool about cars, and you kind of have to respect all of them because there's an audience out there for all of them, and they're all designed specifically for that audience, rather than someone saying, I've got this really cool idea. They have to always check that really cool idea with marketing and say, can we actually sell this? Yep. And if the answer is no, they're not going to make so it. So you're saying if something sucks, it's probably marketing. Yeah, sucks. absolutely. Blame <laughs> it on marketing. It's not the technician. It's not the engineer. I like that. It's I always like marketing. Way. So a lot of differences, a lot of pros, a lot of cons. You know, we went through a lot, I think, in, in just a short bit. Yeah. Um, any final thoughts? Well, I just, I certainly think they're both. Uh, interesting fields to get into uh, and respectable fields to get into. I think, you know, you got to kind of pick, you know, what are you more passionate about yep. and kind of go that direction. Uh, and, and you're going to learn a lot more than what we talked about in this short Absolutely. discussion from actually Absolutely. doing it. But, and there's yeah. a ton of overlap, you know, both, both benefit from the experience of the yep. other side. Uh, engineers Absolutely. obviously going to yes. benefit a lot from learning with, like you had mentioned, learning with a technician and, yep. and the way their brain attacks a problem. And I think technicians would really benefit from understanding the way an engineer's brain and training attacks a problem. Yeah, and that's actually something we would do is our technicians that worked in our shop at our development center, we'd bring them into meetings and say, hey, we're thinking of doing this. From your perspective, why is this good or bad? And so, you know, people like to like hate on engineers and say, why'd they do this dumb thing? But we do work with technicians to say like, is this smart? Like, yeah. is this a bad idea? And we get feedback all around. Like, all of us want to do the best thing. <laughs> There's just constraints that so can So you're not just it. out to get us. Right, exactly, yeah. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below. And be sure to check out and subscribe to Charles's channel, Humble Mechanic. I'll include links in the video description, maybe a card, something like that, uh, so you can check out his channel. But he makes all kinds of great stuff. He's got tons of experience in the Volkswagen field. Tons. tons Literally of tons. Experience. Like you've Literal held tons. Yeah. Volkswagens with your own hands. Every day. Every day. Yeah. So Not yeah, all worth once. checking out the whole car. Thanks. Thanks, guys.